All right, so let's get this uh, update on Bitcoin and crypto in general done. So last time, I mean, I was thinking about this uh, blue box here and I was really, really hoping to see a bounce here. So again, quickly, why uh, this blue box? Because we had this 50 fib uh, level in uh, log. We had then this Six one eight level in arithmetic, which was at the same point. Between this leg here and this leg, we had this one to one. So yeah, j just quickly for people who don't know Elliot. In Elliot twelve, you have this uh, structure which is called uh, a zigzag, which is that when you are in, a, in an uptrend, sometimes you're gonna have a uh, free wave retracement contained. Uh, within a parallel channel, all right, where this wave is going to be the same length as this. So one to one between this leg and this leg, plus the channel, plus if you take this fib pull from the top to this low here, you had this algo target right in the box as well. So you had plenty of uh, Fibonacci confluence, and uh, if we were to boost, it seemed like the perfect spot to do it because of all, all this reason, all this Fibonacci confluence plus the channel. Um, at this stage there was already one thing which was a bit worrying, which is that we were already trending quite below this uh, green EMA here, which is not something we uh, usually do in a bull run. In bull run, most of the time, the only exception was there, but most of the time in bull run, we just trend all the way, all the way above uh, this green EMA. So that was already a small reason for concern that we were actually trending below it already at this point. And now, well, I mean, I, I was still hoping for a bounce, right? But now it's like, well. We have two three-day candles which have closed below this green EMA. We are in the third one and we keep dipping. So and and we keep moving away from this green EMA so that doesn't look so hot uh, at all at this stage and instead of an ABC zigzag in which case you, you really I really would have liked to see a bounce here to then target for higher highs. Uh, now we have to start, I think, considering that this is not a wave C and it might in fact be a wave three of a current impulse going down like this. <coughs> so I, I think we have to consider this at this stage. Um, so for wave three, the high target in, term, in terms of FIB is 1618. Uh, high probability target level, which is here. So right now we are standing a bit in the middle of nowhere, like bit like below this high probability level for OFC, and uh, still above this high probability level for uh, wave three. But you really have like to to start considering this at this stage. But this is an impulse to the downside, so it doesn't mean the end of as a bull market, but now I'm starting to, you know, consider this type of scenario where uh, we topped of this wave three here, so one two. This was the top of wave three, and now we are in a wave four, so where we might have an impulse here with five waves done, and then we're gonna have this type of, you know, I mean, who knows? Wave, wave four usually it's just wave four usually are very hard to guess, but it's just an idea with potential 3A2 retracement towards the uh, 24K uh, area for for the high uh, probability retracement level for wave 4 before we have a, a last wave up for this bull run towards the 100K level. So that's just a scenario, but like really, yeah, I, I, I really do think we are at the stage where we, we have to start considering this type of scenario where we might be entering a, a longer period of consolidation here. Uh, there's too many roaring signs for me to, to, to just, you know, not 
consider them at all if you look at even the three day RSI um, we are at very low levels like these levels on the three day we never reached them during the last bull run so well, they only reached them when uh, we started the bear market well, I'm not saying again we are in a bear market I'm just saying maybe we are in a larger creative structure before we keep uh, moving up yeah it's it's very low RSI level here I was really hoping for a bounce at the same level on VCMA and at the same level of RSI where we bounced here for this retracement and uh, now we are below all of that so that's for Bitcoin uh, and again it's just a scenario but uh, yeah well, when you start like you know breaking a lot below this green EMA usually then when you, you turn back up to it it's uh, being used as resistance as well like we did here like we did here uh, yeah so it has been broken as a support probably you know it's gonna act as a resistance it's likely that the pink one and the green one are gonna be bear cross very soon I don't see how it's gonna not gonna happen which again is not really something you want to see in bull market it happened just there where we had a tiny bear cross during the preceding bull market but and here like really if you're a bull you, you have to hope that we are in, a, in an area similar to this but uh, yeah this happened after a huge huge drop like I think it was top to bottom 80% or something yeah and uh, right now we are only like 30% or something from the top so yeah I mean again you know we can still uh, burns at this stage like I don't know I, for me it really bothers me that we bridge that because it seemed like if we are in a bull uh, structure or in a bull environment still we should have boots here like let, let me show you another example of why, why I really don't like when this type of structure are broken um, let's go here all right so on the 15 minutes and I'm gonna show you why I really don't like this so this you can convince us one two three four five impulse and you know you don't know what's gonna happen so you take your fib level you say okay if it's a wave two high probability target would be the 50 or 618 so let's take uh, it looks like we are forming like a free wave type of correction let's see let's measure this compared to this let's put the one to one observe we have the one to one very close to uh, the 50 level here fib so we can already say, oh, I'm gonna look at this area to possibly enter along here. Then you draw your channel and you basically wait for the price to reach the bottom of the channel. So let's see what happens. All right, so we reach the channel, the 50 to the tick, one to one. Looks like we have a reaction, that's interesting. So if you enter the long here, I don't know, like, uh, you know, it, it starts to look good already. Looks better, okay. So at this stage, you should, you should like, secure your trade, right? Take a partial to put your stop loss at break even or in slight profit. And uh, yeah, at this stage, it would be like, it would make perfect sense to think, okay, well, this looks like a five waves up, so maybe we're gonna retrace and then keep moving it back up. So let's see what happens. Alright, we keep moving up, that's good. Now we have a retracement. Uh, okay, well, I mean, your invalidation and your stop loss should be here at this stage. And, well, your stop loss is hit, meaning what you thought was happening with ABC structure is not what is happening in reality. So at this stage, you should, you know, question what's going on. like. But you, you were thinking about ABC zigzag and it's clearly not what's going on here so you should start to be very careful and uh, sure enough well 
shit happens after. So I'm not saying we are gonna have this type of huge dump at this stage. I, I really don't think so. Like we, we already dumped quite a lot. But again, like it's uh, you know when you have this perfect area for burns and you just fail to burns here, it's uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not so good. So for me, yeah, like right, again, right now we are in the middle of nowhere. I'm looking for this one six one eight. If we get there, you know, you can play a bounce here for potential way four, and uh, yeah, and if you know, you know, until there, I'm not judge. I'm, I'm probably not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna wait for high probability area to try to do something. So that's for Bitcoin. Uh, wow, well, that's messy. So let's check if. And we have something very similar, right? In the sense that um, I was hoping for this one, two, three, four here, A, B, C, zigzag, for a bounce. I was really hoping for that. Uh, I probably the adjustment area for where four is a three, two, so we were like between three, two, and fifty. That's fine. We were on the moving average, which held as a support here. That was fine, that was good as well. We were on the channel, that was another good thing between this leg and uh, this point here. We were more or less at the one to one. So that was another good thing going on. And we were also at the midline of this base channel, which is, uh, you know, usually a good area for web for burns. So I was looking for all of this and, uh, well, instead of bouncing, we kept diving and now we are training below the 50, which for a point control wave 4, it's very deep. Uh, we broke this midline of this best channel. Also another thing for wave 4, which would have been great here, is that this would have been a zigzag wave 4, which would have given us alternation compared to this uh, flat wave 2. So that was that would have been perfect again to to get these bones here uh, to move higher, uh, but it's not what we got. And now we are even at uh, one six one eight between this leg and this leg here. So it starts to look more like uh, a, a wave three than uh, a wave C, right? So yeah. Uh, again, it's really not ideal. So at this stage, uh, like, because there was always like for me an interrogation: did the wave four end here or here? And uh, if the end was here, then you know this one, two, three, four, five count would have made sense. But also, there was this possibility that we ended here, and that this is just one, two, three, four here with this flat four which actually flat in a four is more likely than in a tube. And then we had just this extended wave five close to a one to one fib ratio, which is like probability level for wave five. So if that's the case, then your high probability retracement level becomes this wave two of wave five, which is right there at set 2300 level. So again, like at this stage, I don't think there's much to do, but watch for me at least what's going on here. And if, uh, so that's for Bitcoin and if, um, for altcoins. So I spoke, this is an altcoin index, right? I spoke about this a little bit. Um, well, we had this stage where like I spoke about the fact that you know this EMA in a bull trend we were holding it for the most part, right? So sometimes like in this first wave last year, we had some days where we were trending a tiny bit below, but we were quickly reclaiming it. And the only area really where we broke below it was during this major wave two. Cycle wave two like this. Right. And the question was, where is this wave 3 going to end? Uh, and last time I was speaking about this, I was saying, well, if we start breaking below this uh, pink AMA, that's probably a sign that wave 4 started. So 
you know, during this entire wave three, we were trending above it, like we had one daily close below. That's all. That's it. Uh, no, we have right there three daily close below it. So that starts to be very indicative of a potential uh, start of a wave four. All right. So not the end of the bull market again. <clears throat> but probably like a longer period of consolidation, in my opinion. Same thing for the RSI, like during bull trend, we mostly hold above the midline. And here, I mean, it's not catastrophic yet, but it starts to look like something like this that we had during the wave two, where we were trending below it, right? In fact, it's the lowest RSI level we had on the daily since uh, we started this entire wave three. So definitely quite a lot of you know warning signs here. Uh, even if you take like individual coins like BNB, it's the same thing. We start to train. Oh, okay, so that was my expectation, and I guess we did not move as high as expected but yeah uh, we're not running well be below it which we did not do at all during this entire wave uh, free going on so that's for BNB I don't know maybe we can look at Cardano so Cardano we hit to the tick this one six one eight with huge reaction after. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, eh, it's done, uh, for sure it's a web 4, but, uh, well, you take a lot of risk, in my opinion, if you want to try to long this. I mean, we're still training above for Cardano, above VCMA, but, yeah, uh, you have a 5 waves up done. In this 5, you can probably convince us 5 waves as well. <coughs> so, you know, that's what it is. So maybe a last thing to, to finish because I don't think like, yeah, I think it's important. Um, so last year for Cardano, we topped on 26th of July. And if, sorry, on Bitcoin first, And I'm not saying again it's what's gonna happen, but you know, like really, we are at this stage where you should start to consider this type of scenario. Like, I think it would be retarded to, you know, to not consider it at least. You know, just uh, but there, there's a lot of signs. Like, I mean, there, there was already a lot of signs here in the, because we were training below the EMA, but now that we even broke below this high probability bounce zone. It just, uh, you know, another sign that uh, you should be worried. Okay, so here it was 17 of August from the top of Bitcoin, so 17 of August. It was here. So I'm trying to bang the point here that the fact we topped on some uh, stuff doesn't mean some ads are not going to keep running, right? 1st of September for if. So right there, and let's take, I don't know, another coin like uh, NEO, for example. NEO top was 18 of September. So 18 of September is here. So Cardano top, Bitcoin, if NEO, right? So it really like shows that you should not expect all the coin to top at the same time. Like in fact, when we topped on Neo, the entire retracement on Cardano was already done. And so Cardano, 26th of July. So when we topped on Neo, on, on Cardano, sorry, we were here on Neo and we kept running, right? We kept running uh, for this really big move after. So it's really, 
doesn't mean that you're not gonna have still coins which keep running uh, right now so yeah but you know you definitely have a lot of running sign of um, quite a lot of coins in my opinion um, maybe so let's take a look at Sol as well Solana so Solana uh, I had this target as a 1618 back in January which was here and last time I spoke about it uh, I was speaking about this possible Elliot count here so why did this disappear sorry for the wave 3 of course right which means we're gonna have a wave 4 and then a, a, a wave 5 most likely but Okay, that's the last coin uh, I'm gonna look at uh, Sol before I wrap this up. Um, and then the sub current was, I mean, one, two, three, four, five in the three. And in uh, this five, one, two, three, four, five. And we were here last time I was speaking about it and I was saying, well, we kept bouncing all the way on this EMA, so likely we're gonna have one last bounce here. Um, which we had it seems and uh, in this wave last wave up in my opinion again I can be wrong but that's just the way I'm looking at it right now um, so take your fib and you measure this this right and one thing to point out is <coughs> this wave free in black here was shorter than your wave one. And remember in uh, Elliot, one of the three rules is that three cannot be the shortest, which means that when your wave three is shorter than your wave one, wave five has to be shorter than your wave three, right? Which means your max target for your wave five would have been up there. But no, I mean, it's, you know, it looks, like it's quite topish to me so again confirmation will be when we break below this EMA but yeah it's not something I would be looking too long at this stage uh, given the current state of the market given the fact that we can count five waves at at least two different degrees of trend given the fact that we reached this 1618 already so yeah all of that stuff you know so yeah I guess that's pretty much it for me for today um, again I mean we can magically bounce here <laughs> I don't know I'm just uh, I just think that if we were to bounce the high probability level to do that would have been here so now I'm starting to think that the most likely thing is that we we are in a more bearish in the midterm scenario I still think 100% that we're gonna see higher prices by the end of, the, of this bull run, 100%. But uh, yeah, right now I think it's time for like maybe a few months of uh, retracement. So yeah, that's my current outlook for this market. All right, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye.